This is me. I'm Meadow Robertson. This is me now. I can't tell if much has changed or I'm the exact same. I'm never content with my looks. I always want something different. My whole life I haven't known who I am, and I'm not sure if it's the teen girl angst or the bitter attitude. When I look in the mirror, I'm not even sure who's looking back. Who is she? What's the name? And why do they look so tired? I do know a few things for sure about me, no matter how confusing they are. I know I like art. Every single form. I'm inconsistent though. My style never stays the same. When I draw myself, I'm either a grotesque monster or a perfect specimen. Being indecisive is my strong suit. I have an obstructed view of myself. Something is in the way of, of my understanding. I don't even feel human. There's a chance I'm a robot, maybe an alien. I was born in Michigan, 10 whole minutes from the Canadian border. I watched the Doodle Bops, ate Barbie Pop-Tarts, and would wait for my dad to come home at his factory job at around 4 a.m. In Michigan, there was a really awful bug season. From May to June, black flies cover all the land around you, and I'm at least 70% sure this began my obsession with bugs. That's something people never expect about me. I love bugs. When I was four, we moved here to Kansas City. My dad relocated for his job, and my mom decided to chase her dreams of becoming a nurse. My parents were both originally from St. Louis, but it was time for a change. I did everything a kid did, went to the creek behind my neighbor's house to catch crawfish, finding bugs, and just enjoying life until the streetlights came on. A lot of things changed when I was eight, though. I started having anxiety, panic attacks, and constantly worried about missing the bus for school. For the record, I've never been late for the bus. When I was eight, though, my parents split, and I looked back at that night and laughed uncomfortably. Remembering my mom throwing plastic geese at his truck as he drove away, I watched, standing in my Rapunzel nightgown, dazed. The sleeves were itchy. He stayed in a hotel room for a while, and I remember eating off-brand cereal and watching morning cartoons before he'd drive me to school. Things from then on had gotten better or gotten worse. This roller coaster has fed, had its fair share of bumps. My mom and dad still co-parent even living a street or so away. And I've always been an only child, besides my two half-sisters. With them being so much older, though, we never really connected. I have a faint memory of them duct taping me to a wall, though. There aren't a lot of important people in my life. My family is very small. My mom, my dad, and my stepmom, Vicky, are the only immediate family members I have. I have a few friends, honestly not a lot. Meg and I feel like I've known her my whole life. Since sixth grade, we've had each other's back, and I wouldn't change it for the world. I stare a lot. I don't mean to make you uncomfortable, I just observe the world rather than participate. And I listen to music constantly. I act like I'm in a sitcom. I'm not the main character, trust me. At best, I'm the sidekick that the audience slowly warms up to. At worst, I'm the cameraman. Even then, that's not that bad. But there are some good things about me. I'm open, which can be a double-edged sword. I have a very big heart and I let everyone in. Even if I get hurt, I don't like building walls. Why would I keep out future friends? Speaking of which, I'm hopelessly optimistic. As much as I overthink, my optimism still overrules. I'm very observant. If you tell me one small detail of you or your life, I will remember it. I love seeing minuscule details when they have so much meaning to others. Small, meaningless items like scrap paper with phone numbers scribbled onto it or artifacts of the lies it's attached to. With being observant, I see art everywhere. In this world, there's so much art you can find. And the more you observe, the more you see it's all around. Try it from my lens, a magnifying glass.